Welcome to this evening's special release event of L. Ron Hubbard Presents Writers of the Future, Volumes 36 and 37. My name is John Goodman. I'll be your host. I'm the president of Galaxy Press. You will see our just created highlights video of the 2020 and 2021 Awards Gala held at the beautiful Tagline Complex in Hollywood just a few weeks ago, where we celebrated the release of Volumes 36 and 37. We're very happy that we were able to partner with Books A Million for this event. Books A Million has been a long-term friend of the Writers of the Future program, so much so that this year they specially ordered 75 copies of Writers of the Future signed by the winners and judges while they were in Hollywood. And guess what? These are being made available to the first 75 people who order their books tonight. See the link in the chat in order to, your, in order to order your copy now. Also, I'll be asking that questions that you're going to have for the Q&A, please post them in the chat. We're able to get through a lot more questions if we just are able to entertain questions off the chat. Also, we'll be posting periodically the link to order your copies of Writers of the Future Volume 36 and 37 in the chat. So you can quickly just click to that, get your books ordered, and make sure that you're able to get one of those 75 copies of the autograph books with all the judges and all the winners who are in attendance at the event. So to begin with, I want to introduce Dave Farland and Barbara Lund. Dave Farland is the coordinating judge for Writers of the Future, and Barbara Lund is our gold award winner this year for Writers of the Future, Volume 37. So, uh, hello, Dave and Barbara. Hello. Hi. They're going to be on hand here afterwards to be able to answer any of your questions. So, without further ado, Jason, let's have the video of the highlights of Writers of the Future, Volume 36 and 37 release. Welcome to the 36th and 37th anniversary of the L. Ron Hubbard Presents Writers and Illustrators of the Future. When Daedalus first stretched his makeshift wings to soar towards the heavens, humanity was able to tell a story. It was a story of striving for something new, something greater than the fulfillment of a single life. To tell a story is to embrace the spirit, the essence of the heart and soul. For eons, that tradition went uninterrupted, spoken from generation to generation, or painted on every possible surface. Then came canvas and the page, a new era of storytelling. The speed of our achievement began to match the pace of our dreams. The Industrial Revolution, which so changed the size of the world we live in, also changed the nature of the stories we tell. Daring adventurers stretched the limits of science and art, pursuing the dreams of the creative, and humanity flew. A single story could be shared with millions, storytellers like Dickens with his great expectations. Verne and his 20,000 leagues under the sea, and Wells with his War of the Worlds, paved the way for Steinbeck with his Grapes of Wrath, Mann's Royal Highness, and L. Ron Hubbard's To the Stars, to lay a literary foundation for the golden age of storytelling, a road map to the future. McCaffrey's Dragons of Pern, Bradbury with his Fahrenheit 451, Heinlein's Starship Troopers, Frank Herbert's Dune, and a wave of far-seeing, almost prophetic writers of the human condition created a new world for the modern novelist such as Kevin Anderson, Larry Niven, and Orson Scott Card to create in. And in turn, these storytellers have found the bright torch of creation to be one that can be passed along to the next generation of great creators. But a curious thing has happened. For a score of centuries, humanity strove to catch up to the impossible dream of Daedalus' flight, and in the last 85 years, we caught up to the future told in the stories of those who wrote such far-fetched dreams. The current judges and winners of Writers of the Future live in a world where jetpacks are real. Google is testing the self-driving car. Sony has created robots that look like humans. As the torch of imagination is shared with this newest group of writers and illustrators of the future winners, we can only imagine what wonders they will discover as we come full circle into a new golden age. 
Please welcome our mistress of ceremonies, executive director of author services, representing the literary works of L. Ron Hubbard, Ms. Gunhild Jacobs. Thank you very much, and good evening. What a couple of years we've been through. But tonight, we are grateful that we can get together again, and this time for a double dose of magic, because we are honoring not 24, but 50 outstanding writer and illustrator winners selected by our all-star Blue Ribbon judges. So from all of us at Author Services and Galaxy Press, I want to welcome all of you to the 2021 celebration of science fiction and fantasy writing and art. We have 33 winners from volume 36 and 37 with us tonight. The balance of the awardees are not able to make it due to travel restrictions. Or as in the case of K.D. Juliger, she just had a baby. <laughs> we are also honored to hear from Tony Weisskopf, publisher of Bain Books, as our keynote speaker. This year we will release not one, but two Writers of the Future anthologies, volumes 36 and 37. While volume 36 was released online in 2020, it was never released at our own event, and the grand prize winners from that volume were never announced. So now to release, Elvin Hubbard presents Writers of the Future, volumes 36 and 37. Please welcome the President Galaxy Press, Mr. John Goodwin. Thank you. 2020, 2021, two unreal years, two very real books. Elwin Hubbard presents Writers of the Future, Volume 36, and Elwin Hubbard presents Writers of the Future, Volume 37. And here they are. What you'll find in the Writers of the Future anthology is a sampling of some of the best and the finest new writers of our time. And so it really does help the best rise to the top. It's not specialized in very hard science fiction, fantasy, horror. It's a diverse mix of imaginative stories. get wonderful, surprising, powerful, moving stories from writers who have acquired the finest tools that the literature of science fiction and fantasy supply. Great stories. Just read for the great stories. And the art. It's all good. This is the face of science fiction as it is today. So get ready to be carried away to places no one has ever gone before. Discover the mesmerizing power of these new voices, the chosen ones, selected by today's best-selling science fiction and fantasy authors and artists. I hope you enjoy this double shot of imagination as much as we enjoyed finding the talent. and bringing their creativity to you in the form of these soon-to-be best-selling and award-winning books. Thank you. My people, <laughs> it's so great to be here. 
I'd like to thank the organizers of the Writer of the Future event for inviting me here to talk to you all. Is it not a lovely venue? <laughs> yeah. At workshops, I am notorious for asking writers what their theme is. So I will make it easy on you guys and give you the theme of my speech right up front. Since it is so likely that children will meet with cruel enemies, let them at least have heard of brave knights and heroic courage. Otherwise, you are making their destiny not brighter, but darker. C.S. Lewis said that, yes. 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 <laughs> and I'll, I'll get back to that theme in a minute. Um, my association with the Writers of the Future goes back a long way, longer than some of this year's winners have been alive, in fact. <laughs> While I was still in college a long, long time ago, I knew that I wanted to become involved in science fiction publishing as an editor. In my senior year, I would attend science fiction conventions with resume in hand. One of my good friends was A.J. Algis Budris, the founding judge of Writers of the Future. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he and author services would throw parties at conventions to publicize the contest. And those parties were much more modest than this event, though still, I have to say, very classy. They always had the best canapes, and one of the reasons why is my Part of my earliest recollection of the writers of the future, chopping cheese and cutting vegetables in a hotel suite. <laughs> I have come a long way in four decades, and so has the contest. <laughs> One of the reasons I'm here speaking to you is because over the years, there have been many writers of the future judges, illustrators of the future judges, and winners associated with my company, Bain Books. Some of the more than 20 judges whose work we've had the honor sure of publishing, the honor of publishing, include the aforementioned Algis Budris, Tim Powers, Kevin J. Anderson, Gregory Benford, Anne McCaffrey, Larry Niven, and Jerry Pornell. Many of your artist judges have graced our covers too, including Bob Eggleton and Dan Dos Santos, who is here with us tonight. And we've not only published those folks, but also a bunch of the Writers of the Future winners, too, including novels by Eric Flint, who is himself now a judge for the contest, and in alphabetical order. Oh, yeah, clap for Eric, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> in alphabetical order, Stoney Compton, Jim Glass, John Moore, Martin Shoemaker, Eric James Stone, and Brad R. Torgerson. Winner Bill Ledbetter works with us on our Jim Bain Memorial Award short story contest. And winner Sean Patrick Hazlitt is editing a couple of original anthologies for us. His next one is due out next year. And let me tell you, there has never been a better time to be involved with science fiction. Science fiction won <laughs> at the box office, on TV, in popular culture of all kinds. IKEA is using robots to sell furniture. <laughs> And somehow rockets sell mortgages. I don't know how, but <laughs> there is an actual company called iRobot. It's not just a book title from Isaac Asimov. Our biggest billionaires are true believers. Jeff Bezos collects science fiction art and is a science fiction fan. Elon Musk is too. Even Senator Ted Cruz quotes Star Trek. <laughs> but there is a downside to all of that. Back in the day, there was a sense that we, those of us who read and wrote and illustrated and published and reviewed SF and chopped cheese and threw parties, that we were all in this together. It was, to quote a fanish trope, a proud and lonely thing to be a fan. Well, we have lost the lonely, and some of us might say we are on the way to losing the proud part too, but we don't have to. We. All of us here, the bright stars of the future, together with your experienced judges and workshop coaches, we are a community. And tonight, I want to remind us of some of the things that we do right as a community, things that we can be proud of. I'm not saying that there's no room for improvement. I'm just saying that I prefer to focus on the positives, the things that bring us together, not the things that divide us. And in my 50 or so years of being part of this community, I've come to the conclusion that science fiction is a conversation. 
Science fiction is a literature of ideas, and ideas were made to be shared. There is room for everybody here. That's not an accident. The people who make up the community of science fiction have always been inclusive and have always been generous of spirit. One of the things we do well as a community is pay it forward. L. Ron Hubbard created Writers of the Future to pay it forward. Our culture was one of inclusion. The only criteria needed to join, enjoy science fiction. That's it, boom, there's your secret handshake, you're in. And I have seen that personally in action for over 40 years. My point being, there is no need to be ashamed of where you come from. It's okay to be proud of the community that you belong to and that you all contribute to. So lift each other up, share your experiences with newer writers and artists, just as the writers and illustrators of the future have helped you. Keep the chain of pay it forward going. Include everyone in your futures. Keep the conversations going. And most importantly, be proud to tell your tales of brave knights and heroic courage and show competent good people solving problems. And if that's not how you work, show the dark side of if this goes on. Show us where we don't want to go. But mostly, lift each other's up. Let your words lift each other up. Make our futures brighter, not darker. We're going to need it. And now, on to the awards. While all the winners get prestigious awards, only one writer and one illustrator will receive the L. Ron Hubbard Golden Pen and Golden Brass Awards, an achievement that can and does change the course of their lives. Thank you all so much for being here. That's the first group I want to thank. And then um, I also want to thank all the other amazing contestants. Everyone else here has been so wonderful. It's been wonderful to spend a week with you all and um, you know, enjoy that camaraderie that comes with having the same kind of uh, mind and way of looking at things, and it's been wonderful. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I firstly just wanted to thank all of the people that write and illustrate fantastical stories. I really think they just make the world a more wonderful and hopeful place, and they've always helped and inspired me so, so much. And all the judges and guest speakers this week, I have so loved learning from you all, and I haven't been that excited to wake up early consecutive days in a row for a really long time. So thank you, it was amazing. Oh, well, just want to start off by thanking all you lovely people in the audience for joining us here tonight. To wish myself, my fellow illustrators, and all the amazing authors that are with us tonight to celebrate this amazing um, occasion. I appreciate all the knowledge you guys have given me, and yes, thank you. Thanks to the judges for really paying it forward. You know, they're busy people putting, put, put, you know, I, I'm honored to be on the receiving end of, of all they, they've done for us. To um, Heather Lawrence, um, who, who illustrated my story. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I mean, it's, it's flattering to have someone just kind of pouring over your, your work, thinking about the best way to realize it in an, a, a new medium. Well, ever since I was five, I knew I wanted to be an artist. Um, and I saw the illustrations in the books and the media around me, and I thought, the world is a better place because of this beauty that's there. And I wanted to be the person who was creating those awesome, inspiring illustrations. Um, and that, uh, that journey has led me to here. When we started this, we were the illustrators of the future, but uh, let us now be the illustrators of the present. So I would like to thank uh, L. Ron Hubbard for creating this wonderful contest, everybody at Author Services and Writers of the Future for making it happen. My family and my friends and my writing groups, uh, my team at work that's putting up with me being gone, and of course the winners here and Will for creating a beautiful piece of art for me. Thank you. Yo, what's up, LA? <laughs> I'd like to thank Barbara for writing such an amazing story. It was really fun to illustrate. Um, thank you, author services. Thank you, judges. 
So I'm arriving like with the full energy of everything going on, all the excitement. Um, and I just want to say thank you so much to all of my fellow writers and illustrators who have made me feel so welcome. So I'm going to start with the obvious thanks first, which is thank you to everybody at Galaxy Press and Author Services for organizing this whole thing. Very dope, very rad. Thank you very much. Um, and also a shout out to L. Ron Hubbard for starting this whole thing. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, thank you everybody who came out tonight and everybody who is there at home watching, you know, we appreciate it. Thanks for the support, guys. It means a lot. And a huge thanks to Mr. Hubbard for this contest and keeping it alive. Just, it's amazing. So first of all, I'd love to thank L. Ron Hubbard, Author Services, and all the judges for making this event possible and for putting their faith in me as an illustrator. I'm so honored to be here with all these amazing illustrators. Uh, I think now more than ever, the world needs stories. They need stories for their ability to help others see the world through different eyes and to explore new ideas in a way that's not threatening and might help them make realizations. And I can't think of anyone who's done more to proliferate that ability than Mr. Hubbard and his foundation. So I'm just tremendously grateful. Well, thanks so much. This is so thrilling. I appreciate it. Uh, I'd like to open my thanks for the contest coordinators and staff at the uh, author services for all their work, uh, their hard work for both the contest and for this week. I'd also like to recognize my illustrator, Andre Mata, who's a Portugal resident, so he couldn't get here, but hopefully next year he'll be here. I'm very grateful to be here this week. As for all that's been provided by the people who make Writers of the Future possible prior to this week, especially the judges. This includes encouragement for some of my 14 previous attempts in entering the contest. <laughs> Well, just like FJ, I submitted to this contest 14 times before I got in. And uh, I finally... <laughs> well, I finally found my way up here, but there were a few rough years there. During those times, every now and then, I would get an email from Joni telling me that I had won another honorable mention. Um, or a silver honorable mention. And those just gave me that little bit of hope that I needed to keep on with my writing. I'm so honored to be a part of this organization and this contest. I want to say a special thank you to L. Ron Hubbard for believing in the future of this genre, when not too many people do. Uh, I want to say thank you to all the judges, mentors, Galaxy Press, and author services for giving so much of yourselves to us. You know, this is an amazing thing, bringing all these new writers and illustrators together. And I've been, I first submitted to this contest when I was 18 years old. So here I am 19 years later. So it was a long time coming, but. <laughs> this has been an unforgettable experience. Um, thank you to my illustrator, Rupam, for his amazing artwork. You know, when I heard that I won the contest, I smiled and I grinned really big. But when I saw Rupalm's vision of my work, I cried. I feel a little envious about the people that only submitted for 19 years. Uh, <laughs> I was submitting in the 90s, so. <laughs> um, I want to thank the judges for their guidance and generosity. Mariah for an awesome illustration. Not only captured the, the, the story, but she put herself into it, her own vision. I thought that was incredible. I just want to thank everyone who's here today and also the people who couldn't make it, but hopefully you can make the next one. Um, I want to thank L. Ron Hubbard, the Writers of the Future, just everyone who's made this come together. Um, Thank you so much, Trent, for writing an amazing story. It touched my heart. I read it at least a million times. Like, I love it. It's so good. And I also wanted to thank 
just all the people who I've met here. You guys are so sweet, amazing, and thank you so much. I'll end with a thank you to the judges. You've given me something um, that I didn't know that I needed so bad, which was a, um, a confidence in my work and a belief in myself. It's something intangible that I hope to keep with me for years to come, so thank you for that. Um, I'd also like to thank the judges, uh, not just for the time they took to judge and their amazing great taste, but also <laughs> the, the, time, the time they put into um, <laughs> the time they put in to come and, and give us words of advice and to, to give us uh, encouragement and, and just be open to talk about, talk about any aspect of writing. Uh, it's been great. And finally, I would like to thank the judges for how incredibly wise and supportive they've been of the writers over the past week and for how much they've been willing to give to us over the course of this week. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> For the writers who are still submitting to this contest, keep entering. You never know when you're going to win. Like, you see, I'm from Turkey, and uh, from a small town in Turkey to LA, I cannot express how thankful I am, how grateful, grateful I am for the judges and volunteers for their time here. And uh, of course, author services for their hard work. But most importantly, I would like to say thank you to my parents. I'm very grateful for them. The parents that supported me through thick and thin uh, in a country that didn't care about art and dreams. It has been such an amazing whirlwind of a week. I'm very grateful to all the support that my teachers and mentors have given me throughout the years. They encouraged me to believe that a career in art was a possibility, even when I didn't believe in myself. I am deeply honored to be able to stand on this stage tonight. Um, this still hasn't really hit me yet. It's kind of mind-blowing for me. Um, I'm very grateful to be a part of this contest and to be able to meet all of these wonderful writers and illustrators as well. Humbled to have met writers of such caliber whose stories have all impressed me so much. Uh, there are people who deserve thanks, uh, Mr. L. Ron Hubbard, without whom this opportunity wouldn't exist. Author Services and Galaxy Press for going above and beyond to support all of us. Uh, Mr. Mason Matak, your artwork is such that stories should be written for it rather than the other way around. First and foremost, I would like to thank um, L. Ron Hubbard for creating this very inspiring contest for all those aspiring writers and illustrators to be able to expose their work and their art to, throughout the world. I'm incredibly honored to have met uh, a group of such talented artists and mentors. Having this peer group is invaluable as an artist. I feel that we hold each other accountable as we work towards our goals. I also want to thank uh, both writers Tim and Brittany for their wonderful stories in volumes 36 and 37 that I had the honor of illustrating. I'm here. <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> yeah. This week has been amazing. Um, I want to thank um, Mr. Hubbard, of course, for um, founding this contest. I want to thank Galaxy Press and Author Services. Um, they've been amazing hosts, done so much. Um, the judges, especially Tim and Dave, who helped us navigate through the week and, and taught us so much. I'm honored to be a part of this group of incredibly talented writers and illustrators, and I'm excited to see how we uh, carry forward and shape the future of the genres that we love. And I guess I want to encourage anyone watching who wants to be a writer, who wants to do this, to submit. Use the contest as a tool, as inspiration. Uh, let it keep you moving. Let it give you a target to keep striving for, because uh, we need that. And that's another special thing this contest does.
I was trying to figure out what I wanted to say about this program because it's just, or this contest, because it's just so big and amazing. And I was thinking back and thinking, what was L. Ron Hubbard's point here? And the word that keeps coming up as I think about it is motivation. I wanted to motivate the writers of the future and now the illustrators of the future to actually become those writers, right? And I felt that all week, and actually I felt it before this week started, I felt it before I even ever uh, submitted one time, right? Uh, everybody out there who's thinking about submitting to this contest, you can do it. They want you to do it. <laughs> we want you to do it. We want to find those writers of the future. So thank you, everybody, and this is awesome. Oh, this is my favorite part. <laughs> Each one of our artists is gifted well beyond the norm and has worked hard to gain the prowess that you've seen here tonight. And as much as beauty is in the eye of the beholder, it is also in the eye and the heart of the artist. As for us judges, we're thankful that we get to judge anonymously or it would simply be too personal and too impossible with such a talented group of artists. But we did manage to come up with a grand prize winner for both volumes. The volume 36, Illustrators of the Future Golden Brush Award, with his beautiful trophy and grand prize check of $5,000, goes to the illustrator of the illustrator of Stolen Sky on Lee. Oh, thank you. Sorry guys, I'm still shaking. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. It's, this is still unreal at this moment, but I cannot express how grateful I am to be a part of this amazing event. And just to thank again, I am so happy to be able to accept this award and um, to see that my parents are so proud is just, I can't even express it in words, but once again, I'd just like to thank so much all the members of Authors Services and Galaxy Press for this to be, even be possible is an incredible journey that I will never forget. Thank you so much. <laughs> the volume 37, Illustrators of the Future Golden Brush Award, with this beautiful trophy and grand prize check of $5,000, goes to the winner of the illustrator of How to Steal the Plot Armor, Dan, Dan Watson. <laughs> Hi everyone, thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank Elron Hubbard and Galaxy Press for creating and organising this event. I'd like to thank my mum and my dad, who always supported and encouraged me over the years. Uh, thank you to all my mentors who have helped me so much along the way, including Dan Dos Santos, who, with my friend and fellow illustrator Ben Hill, convinced me to sign up to this in the first place. Um, Thank you to all my friends all over the world. And I love the fantasy and sci-fi community, the art, the, the writing, the people, but I'm sorry I can't be there in person this year, but thank you. Anticipation lies thick in this room. I feel it in you. 
We're all brimming with anticipation to see which of these fine new writers will win the Golden Pin Awards for volumes 36 and 37. Okay, the uh, volume 36, Writers of the Future, Golden Pin Award, and uh, ch uh, check, grand prize check for $5,000 goes to the author of The Trade by C. Winspear. Good day, good day from Australia, from across the Pacific. The Golden Pen Award! Crazy! Whoa. I, uh, it's probably good this is recorded because I am going to be an incomprehensible mess right now. I will be running around my little room, so excited. I'll be pulling out my novel from the trunk and I'll be giving it a good quick clean before I email all of you. All of you, you're going to get one. It's, uh, um, I, it's, I'm just going to be incomprehensible. So thank you. Thank you a thousand times. And this is not just uh, an encouragement for me personally. This is, of course, an encouragement for my fellow writers here in Australia and across the world. We're a little bit further from the, from the buzz of sci-fi and fantasy, which tends to be, you know, New York and U I guess US focused. Um, so thank you. This is, this is huge encouragement. Um, and I'm sure my fellow Sydney writers like Harry Goddard and Zoe Knowles and, and Layla Norsheen, who gave me some great advice on this story, so big thanks to her. Um, I'm sure they're going to be winning their own awards soon enough. Uh, and of course, I have to thank, um, you know, my parents. And I want, to, I want to actually congratulate too the other authors who are in the anthology this year, a great company. And I, I look forward to defining the future of sci-fi and fantasy with you guys. So yes, there's nothing like this competition. There's nothing in this time where it's getting increasingly harder to get you know, a short story or a novel published that like just, just celebrates new talent the way that this contest does. So thank you a thousand times. Thank you to Author Services and, and the big man Elrond Hubbard for starting this award. Um, I hope that some other famous authors soon start their own awards. No pressure. No pressure, but it'd be great to keep fostering new talent like this, keep the conversation going, keep everything alive. Um, and, and just enjoy science fiction and fantasy as much as we all enjoyed it growing up. Um, continue, that, continue that fire. So thank you, a thousand thank yous. I look forward to seeing you all next year or as soon as I can. Mwah! Wow. Imagine if he'd been here. And the uh, Volume 37 Writers of the Future Golden Pen Award and Grand Prize Check for $5,000 goes to the writer of the story Sixes by Barbara Lund. <laughs> Joni when she called, and apparently I'm going to cry at you all as well. <laughs> thank you. Thank you to the judges, and thank you to my family, and thank you to everyone here. I did not expect this because I'm in such a great, great company of amazing writers. So thank you very much. This marks the end of the 2021 L. Ron Hubbard Achievement Awards and the beginning of a new year of creative accomplishments. As L. Ron Hubbard stated, we instinctively revere the great artist, painter, or musician, and society as a whole looks upon them as not quite ordinary beings, and they are not. They are a cut above man. He who can truly communicate to others is a higher being who builds new worlds. From all of us at Author Services and Galaxy Press, congratulations to all the winners, and thank you all for being with us tonight. Stay safe and enjoy the rest of the evening. 
Thank you. I'm Tim Powers, and I've been a judge for Writers of the Future for 35 years. Hello, my name is B. Jackson, and I am a past winner and current judge of the Illustrators of the Future contest. Hi, I'm S.M. Sterling, also known as Steve, and this is my first year. Hi, I'm Jody Lynn Nye. I've been a Writers of the Future judge for the last five years. I'm Dan DeSantos. I'm one of the artist judges for Writers and Illustrators of the Future. My name is Echo Chernick, and I'm the coordinating judge for the Illustrators of the Future. Hi, my name is Tom Wood. This is my first year judging. Hi, this is Kevin J. Anderson, and I've been a judge of Writers of the Future for 25 years. Over that time, I have discovered so many new stories, so many new writers, and if you read the new collection, volume 37, you'll get some of the best science fiction, fantasy, and horror that's being written, and you'll find the new stars for tomorrow. All right, that was pretty amazing, wasn't it? I think it was pretty cool. So many amazing people every year. I'm, I'm always impressed with how 12 new writers, 12 new artists can come up with such fantastic stories, whether it's science fiction, fantasy, alternate history, uh, whatever the genre it is, whatever the type of story, it's always so fresh, so amazing. So now we're going to move into the Q&A that we promised with Dave Farland and with Barbara Lund. If you have questions, be sure to put it into the, uh, the chat. That's how we're going to be able to know what, to, uh, what questions to ask. I'm going to start off with my own questions. So first, Dave, uh, just a little bit of why you became a judge for Writers of the Future. Oh, gosh. When I was asked a long time ago, I was a fairly new writer at the time. And, and first of all, it was a huge honor. But... You know, when you start looking at it, there's this culture of generosity in science fiction and fantasy, uh, a culture of paying it forward and encouraging new writers. And I got so much encouragement from people like L. Ron Hubbard, who gave it posthumously in, in my case, but also um, when I met Orson Scott Card and Tim Powers and Algis Budras at the very first workshop that I went to, they were a great example. And later on, um, I had a chance to be uh, nurtured by Anne McCaffrey and, and Ray Bradbury and uh, a number of others, just too many even to mention. And I think, that, um, I think that we all just kind of naturally gravitate toward that. That's great. And um, what does Rise of Future, what has it from your perspective provided to science fiction and fantasy? Well, you know, it's... Um, it, it's an interesting uh, thing because I, I don't think we're going to see the, res the results of this contest in our lifetimes because it's growing every year. We're, we're having hundreds of new works being published by past winners and past, uh, uh, past writers and past illustrators. And, uh, and it's helped the field grow uh, a, a great deal and it, it continues to grow. And I just see it as being like a, a pebble that's been dropped into the waters of time and it's spreading out and getting a greater and greater influence every year. And uh, I, I think it'll be interesting, you know, to look back a hundred years from now and see what kind of an influence it's really had because I don't think we can, we can really tell quite yet. I think you're absolutely right there. And just lastly, why should people read Writers of the Future? Well, you know, when I, um, when I was entering the contest years ago, I, I won in volume three. And the first thing that I did when I found out about the contest is I thought, well, I'd better go find out what kinds of stories are winning, you know, um, what's the competition looking like and, uh, and how high do I need to raise the bar? And I went out and picked volumes, picked up volumes one and two read them two, read them through two or three times each. Uh, then I went to Asimov's and um, fantasy and science fiction and the major magazine markets and started reading those too. And all of that gave me a great foundation for uh, not only uh, learning how to win the contest, but learning how to be a science fiction and fantasy writer in the first place. Great. Well, that's good. So now 
Over to you, Barbara. I've got a few questions for you as well. So basically discuss what Winning Rise of Future has meant for you as an author. Oh my goodness. First, I have to say watching that brings it all back. <laughs> <laughs> it was just an amazing experience. Uh, so I think meeting all of the people and listening to our teachers has improved my writing just in in learning all the things that I need to do better and obviously I do some things okay but <laughs> I think we can always improve and continue to improve so I love that we've had the opportunity to meet all these people and each other and just improve everything that's great and from your perspective why should fans read writers of the future why should they read the books because the stories are amazing if I'd have read this volume, I would have not even submitted for 37 because I would have been completely <laughs> and not been able to uh, even think that I would win. Because yeah. Well, that's great. And I'm glad you didn't uh, get discouraged because you had an amazing story with Sixers. So now we've got a few questions uh, I'd like to ask. Uh, that's, that's coming here. One is, um, let's see, we've got from Robert Hogg. Um, Dave, how do you come up with your best ideas for a book or short story? Oh, gosh. You know, um, my secret for years has been to eat pepperoni pizza before going to bed. Um, I don't know what it is, but I, I just get weird dreams. Uh, and and I, I would like to say that I had a better um, way of doing it. But, you know, things come out subconsciously and you don't always understand where they're from. And and um, I, I quite frankly had uh, my idea for my winning story uh, after after eating pepperoni pizza. It just doesn't <laughs> sit well with me. So um, I recommend that very highly. Good. Well, I like pepperoni pizza. I don't plan on entering the contest, but I do. I will take you up on eating the pepperoni pizza. <laughs> and um, Another question, this is also to, uh, to Dave, what common elements stood out amongst all the top stories? Well, I look for, I look for three things in a story. Now, the first thing that I look for is a great concept, something that I haven't seen before, um, you know, maybe a new twist on an old idea or uh, a totally new idea that I haven't seen before. That's the one thing I look for. And then I look for a great story, uh, one that has a powerful opening, that kind of the jaw-dropping moment that makes you go, oh my gosh, how are they going to get out of this? And then I want to see ideas where the character tries to resolve their problems in ways that are intelligent and creative and that uh, sort of make you go, wow, um, I'm just totally in on this journey. And then last of all, what I look for is I look for a writer who writes well on a line-by-line -line basis. Um, somebody who has uh, just what I would call the basic writing chops to tell any story. So they've got a good ear for poetry, um, a good ear for prose, for pacing, uh, for character voices and things like that. So I'm looking at the, at the um, uh, an awful lot of writing skills, I guess. So it's those three things, a great idea, a great story with great storytelling skills. Great. Thank you very much for that. Now, um, we've got a question out for Barbara from Lia Ning. Your action scenes are amazing. How do you approach writing action fight scenes? So I actually have been in, in martial arts world for about 25 years. So I would steal little bits from that. And then I try to always write from the perspective of the character. So if there's somebody new to fighting, I like to make it much more of a blur and not have all those little details because somebody new to fighting isn't going to be able to think of all those things and, and remember those details in telling the story later. But if they're more experienced, then they would be able to, in my experience, because I've been in a few scuffles, um, <laughs> be able to remember more details. I get it. And another question to you, Barbara from Wolf Moon. Um, what did attending such a grand event do for your belief in being a writer and having a career? It blew me away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So I do, or I have published uh, independent novels. And so it gives me that hope that in the next year or so I can turn that into real money making instead of more for fun with a little money on the side. Okay. Well, that's that's definitely a start, and that's that's the whole thing of the, of the contest, to be able to launch those careers, which is done. All right, Rebecca Treasure has a question for Dave. Volume 37 felt to me like it had a very different tone overall than other volumes I've read. There was a lot of humor, some really light stories, in addition to the more familiar science fiction, fantasy, and horror content. Was that just me, or was there an intentional shift in the judging during 2020? There was an intentional shift in the judging. Um, I really felt like we needed a little bit of light in the world in 2020. And so I was looking, I was looking harder for stories that were, um, that were uplifting or funny or um, heartwarming. That's great. So we're gonna, I'm gonna have a few more questions here I'm doing, but if there's anybody else that has any questions, please be sure to add them into the, uh, into the chat so that we can keep on moving on. We have them for a half hour tonight, so let's not waste that opportunity to get some of this amazing insight from a coordinating judge and from this year's grand prize winner. So Barbara, um, you mentioned you have some novels, so where, where are you actually looking at going now with your novels in the, as the next step? So I actually just put one up for pre-order on Amazon. It's a, um, a fantasy about two sisters. The bad guys come to the kingdom and they figure out, the sisters finally figure out that actually their family are the bad guys. So that one's kind of exciting. I would like to go hybrid. So I would love to have a more traditional book contract or two and uh just expand exponentially, really, I hope, get more writing in and get more things published both ways. Okay, that's great. And so, um, so Dave, what do you recommend studying for a ranked beginner to writing besides the obvious Elrond Hubbard Writers of the Future online workshop that you can find on writersofthefuture.com by just clicking on the left-hand side, the fifth button down, to be able to enter the enter the the writing uh, workshop, but so Dave, what would you what would you recommend studying for a rank beginner to, to start? You know, when I was in college and I wanted to study writing, I I actually set a goal of of going to every major writing instructor on campus and and studying all of it um, because I knew that there there was always going to be something I could learn from a teacher that that maybe I hadn't anticipated, and so. Um, I studied under poets, and I studied under novelists, and I studied under screenwriters, and I think all of that's great, but um, I'd be remiss if I didn't say the very best book on writing is David Farland's Million Dollar Outlines, so, <laughs> you know, um, no, I, I, think, uh, I think that I, I approach my method for storytelling uh, in that, and, and it's a little bit different from a lot of others, but I, I really don't want to... Um, don't want to downplay anybody else because there's so many good books on writing and you might find something as a new writer that, um, I'll, I'll be honest, okay, Stephen King gives a lot of very, very basic advice in on writing, for example. People love it. Uh, he's, he's definitely uh, someone who knows his craft, um, but, uh, you know, he would probably give you things that are a little bit easier to digest than what I will. Uh, so um, I think you want to want to go ahead and get that and uh, and that's a great basis for other things great now barbara which authors have inspired you the most and get ready dave because that's coming to you as well how, how long do we have <laughs> <laughs> there are so many uh so currently i love uh, Pat patricia briggs and ilona andrews and um Holly Lyle actually has a whole bunch of classes and new amazing stories coming out. And I grew up on all of the ones that we've talked about. I grew up on Heinlein and McCaffrey and just all of these amazing writers that were involved with Writers of the Future as well. So there's so many. Okay, well, that's good. Thank you. Dave? You know, my... Uh... <laughs> 
I'm, I'm like I'm like Barbara. It's hard to say exactly who my uh, who my my favorite uh, sources were. Uh, I absolutely uh, became a huge fan of the science fiction and fantasy genre by reading two books: Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien and Dune by Frank Herbert. Uh, those were certainly uh, very influential, but also I loved the poetry of William Butler Yeats and Theodore Rutke and uh, William Shakespeare. And I could go back with a huge list of, of modern day authors, people like Gene Wolfe, uh, who passed away a couple of years ago, uh, and Ray Bradbury were, were big influences on my writing early on, too. Oh, okay. William, William Gibson. I don't know. You can just keep on going for the next hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's, it's one thing it's, it's, that makes this contest so so viable, and it's actually why it's done so well and continues to do well is um, Erwin Hubbard is also one was the was one of the most popular writers in um, in the days of the Pulp Fiction in the 30s and 40s. He published over 200 different stories in multiple magazines using 15 different pen names. So when he created this contest after releasing Battlefield Earth, um, it was only fitting that this contest was, was launched, and a lot of his, his peers were the initial uh, judges. You know, Algis Budras, who um, had amazing stories he would tell about when, when he saw Owen Hubbard at, at conventions, um, went on and getting other contemporary authors at that point to, uh, to start this. And it's just continuing that legacy it just goes on nearly four decades now. And so many of today's top writers are those who got their start from Writers of the Future. All right, so here's another question then uh, from Bob W. I'm okay at telling a story, but I'm not very good at writing realistic dialogue. Any tips? And this goes to either one of you. Yeah, email me. Uh, I've got a, I've got a, a little class that I just did on it last week, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll send you a link. Um, but you can email me at uh, mystorydoctor at gmail.com. And that goes for anybody who's on this broadcast. Okay, that's great. Barbara? Dave also has a weekly newsletter, which I totally subscribe to, just saying. <laughs> um, I generally like to, well, I have to hear their voices in my head and then cut out the ums and the wells and the filler words that are in real dialogue, but are not, or are in real conversation, but are not in actual dialogue in books. <laughs> Hope that helps. Absolutely. All right. And on the, um, on the subject of, of writing, so Barbara, some of the people are actually listening to this thing are themselves aspiring writers or um, want to know, you know, how they're going to make their, their, what their next step is. So you've just recently joined the ranks of professional writer um, from from your from an amateur, and that's basically what happened when you walked across the stage there the other night. So, what, a little bit like what your journey has been to go from wanting to be a writer, thinking about it, starting to do it. You know, what type of time lapse, and what was that journey like for you? Uh, it's been about seven years for me, or so. I had a couple months off of work and decided to do one of those write a novel in thirty days. And I've just kept writing ever since. I think the more words that you put on the page and the more you revise and the more uh, different things that you try and better yourself, the better that you get as a writer. Okay, great. And then Dave, a question just came in for you. Are there competent contest entries you have to reject for being too stylistic or strange? Would Gene Wolfe's more poetic or darker streaks have been good volume content? Um, yeah, I'd love to get a, a Gene Wolfe. In fact, I, I got a story that was a very similar to Gene Wolfe, and it was so similar to his style that um, I had to call him up and ask him if, if he had written this story and if it was plagiarized. And it turned out it was written by a fellow who was um, studying to be a linguist, and he was trying to duplicate Gene Wolfe's style. And he did it so spot on that uh, I thought it was one of the best stories we ever had in Writers of the Future. Unfortunately, um, uh, he didn't want it to be published. I guess that was a weird thing. But uh, the answer to that question is yes, there are stories that I get that are maybe a little bit too strange and uh, a little bit too off the wall that are sometimes written absolutely beautifully. I don't, uh, I don't typically um, 
reject them because of that. Uh, for example, I got a story um, a couple of years ago that um, the person sent in a story that was written as if it were by William Shakespeare. And it was in iambic pentameter, uh, the poetic meter. And it was absolutely brilliant, um, kind of a, uh, a steampunk piece. And uh, I would have loved to have had it be a winner. Unfortunately, that person had won the previous quarter. And so we had to disqualify the story. Um, I don't know whatever happened to it, but it's out there floating around somewhere. But um, uh, that was maybe the strangest one that I've had. But I have had some where I thought the style is amazing, but the story content, the story idea isn't there. And that's the danger is that they'll substitute, they'll substitute uh, content for style. And I just can't have that. Okay. Now, one thing too that I want everybody to hear on this as well is sometimes you have a problem where you've got like one year you had three werewolf stories, I think it was, you know, um, and that's a problem. It's also a problem in publishing in general. You've got magazines you submit to and they just publish that kind of a story, the last issue, or they've got five that came in like that, this issue, so they, have to, they can only pick one. Can you cover that a little bit too, like sometimes what happens? Yeah. Um, I actually had one one year where I had six ghost stories that came up in a single quarter that all could have been finalists. And, uh, and I've only got eight finalists. And I looked at them and I thought, um, gosh, I don't want to have a ghost story anthology. And, and also, I don't want to have, you know, ghost story number four competing against number uh one and you know splitting the votes for because people like ghost stories so what i did was i looked at it and i said okay of the ghost stories which is the very best one and i chose the very best of the six ghost stories that went on to win first place in that quarter and the grand prize for the year okay um but i i it wasn't much better than the second place ghost story you know i mean there's a part of me that was just dying to say gosh, I want to put it in the second place one too. But I just, I just couldn't do it. I just had to say, no, this person, this person beat out the second place one. Okay, good. And then another question then uh, to you, Dave, is what tools do you write in? MS Word, flat text, editors, paper? I, uh, I write on, uh, I write in MS Word um, exclusively. I do own Scrivener. I don't use it. Um, and I also use a sheet of paper where I draw out my plot charts. Uh, so I'll, I'll write out plot charts and uh, sometimes I'll write out three by five cards too uh, to use in uh, putting together my, my plot outlines. Okay, great. And then um, let's see, people can keep on uh, putting in questions here and I'll keep on filling in my questions too as because uh, I'm taking advantage of this. Mm -hmm. So, um, now there's any any heads up, Dave, on any books coming out, completing any series in the near future? Well, yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm working on uh, I'm working on my uh, last Rune Lords book. I've finally decided how I want to do it and where I'm going to go with it, um, and it's been it's been a long time coming. But um, I'm excited. I'm I'm uh, going to be very busy uh, working on judging the uh, writers of the future for the next month and then editing the anthology for next year so i'm that's that's my uh, that's what i'm i've got to focus on for right now exactly and just for everybody just to give you a heads up we're pulling rise of the future back to april for 2022 so that's what dave is talking about here uh, obviously we pushed this release to the end of october because that's when we we're able to see things opening up enough that we could have an event which we really wanted to do but now we're going to go back next year to having our event in April, and you'll definitely be seeing more on that um, in weeks to come. But we're definitely scrambling, uh, getting all the stories um, judged and getting all the art ready, getting the artists assigned to the story winners, and we're getting the essays put together, the cover art, all the stuff has been getting wrapped up rapidly so that we have a book uh, ready for April 2022, volume 38, my word. All right, so um, now Barbara, with respect to um, you know the value or, or 
did you very did you use very much the Writers of the Future website in terms of the, either the online workshop, the forum, any of the tools that are provided from Writers of the Future that helped you? It did. Uh, I went partway through the workshop, maybe a year before I won, and then before we went to the event, I went through the rest of it, and super useful. Um, I dipped into the forums just a little bit, but more looking than posting. Yeah. So there's a lot of great people in there. Okay, great. And then Dave, yourself, you teach a lot of, a lot of workshops, a lot of different levels of writing. Um, how does Writers of Future? Because I know I've I've just spoken at some of your workshops as well, but on on what you look for, and because your your writing style obviously very similar to what we have here with with Writers of Future, because we do we go for stories that are going to be PG, they'll be appropriate for middle school on up. Um, so in terms of what you teach and, and how you uh, operate as an author and obviously carrying forward uh, Mr. Hubbard's intention with the contest, um, how does that work with respect to the, the carrying on now of Writers of the Future? Okay, I'm not 100% sure that I understand the question, but um, you know, for me, uh, Writers of the Future is a, is a priority and, and always has been. Um, uh, if I've got something else that I'm trying to do, I, I try to figure out how to fit it in the cracks uh, between between things uh, so that uh, so that I'm working with writers of the future. I am working at a lot of different levels. I'm I'm teaching my 318R courses online and uh, teaching some master classes uh, online and, and things like that. Um, but it's all teaching and and it's uh, you know. There are, there are levels for beginners and uh, intermediate. And, uh, and I see people who come into the field who sometimes are just so quick on the uptake. They can move from being a rank amateur in three months to being an award-winning author, you know, uh, all of a sudden. And so I try, to, um, I try to nurture that. I try to find those people and foster them. Um, I try to find people and foster them all over the place, but I'm especially watching out for those yeah you actually got what i was going for on my question there because it's it's a very different type of story that we look for i mean it's open to everybody obviously anybody can enter the contest and we've got winners all over the spectrum you know age nationality um just just everything that we that we make i mean this year we had a winner who was 16 years old and 67 years old you know so there's no we have any fixed ideas, obviously blind judging, you, you really wouldn't know. Um, but one thing I also want to mention as well, because uh, I'll see a few comments on this on the, uh, on the forum, Rise of the Future Forum. It actually won uh, best forum of uh, 2020 in the Critters um, Online Award. And it's, it's been moderated um, by Wolf Moon, who's just done an amazing job and continues to do an amazing job. He was a winner from Vitamin 35. And he plus other uh, past winners are there to help coach uh, writers along. And one thing special about this one too is that there's no judging, there's no, if someone comes in and starts doing any dissing at all, um, they've got one warning and the second time they're out of there. That's not what this is about. You know, it's all Rise of the Future as created by Orrin Hubbard was to recognize and to reward those uh, artists. And that ending quote that um, Gunnar Jacobs read at the end of the uh, awards event, you know, the uh, writers and artists, artists are a cut above the average person, you know, and we need to like grant them that and just do everything we can to, to help them so that they can then go on, hopefully to a very successful career. And Writers of the Future and Illustrators of the Future has an amazing success story with that. Some of the major, you know, uh, writers and artists of, of the industry are people that graduated from Writers of the Future. Dave, you were graduated from volume three as the grand prize winner. So um, in terms of like what you're looking for on stories for Writers of the Future, can you cover that a little bit, please? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for stories that are generally positive and upbeat, uh, that are going to have um, a, a powerfully good influence on the world. And, and sometimes, you know, we can look at, uh, new innovative technologies, for example, 
and say, okay, what's the future going to be like if, if we master this technology, if, we've, if we come up with these good ideas? But a lot of the stories deal with, I think, the, the moral implications of a technology. When you have a story that, um, where, where a person is granted a science fictional or a fantasy power, you always have to deal with the moral question of what is the right use of power? How can we uh, how could we harness this power and use it wisely and well? And so I'm I'm in particular looking for quest for for stories from people like that, uh, people who can handle the big questions. I guess is the easy way to put it. Um, L. Ron Hubbard, when he wrote about writers of the future and what he was trying to do, uh, it seemed to me that it was pretty clear that he was looking to create something that had a positive impact in the world. And so I'm trying to find stories that, that do that, okay? Um, now, a lot of times they'll be on very dark topics. It'll be set in a dystopian world or something like that, um, but there's always hope, there's always inspiration, there's always um, determination, people struggling and overcoming uh, those types of things. And so um, I guess I'm, I'm looking for stories that ultimately make me feel good, uh, even, even if uh, there's a terrible price to be paid uh, to win in the end. That's great. Well, we're basically used up our, our half hour here, and this has been great. I've very much appreciated you, Dave, and you, Barbara, contributing uh, your words of wisdom here and thank you all very much for attending i'd also like to um mention that we have an award-winning podcast if you've not checked it out i really suggest you do we've had about 150 episodes from writers and artists professionals in industry from all over with the entire purpose of just helping the aspiring writer the aspiring artist and the established writer and artist to be able to make that next step and, and achieve success with their respective industries. We also have, um, obviously, Writers of the Future, Volume 36 and 37, but we've also got all the other volumes of Writers of the Future that you're welcome to get. We have, because of the holidays coming up right now, we've created a brand new, really cool package that you can find out on, if you go to writersoffuture.com, um, where you can get all volumes 30 through 37 at a special discounted price. and. Um, we really are doing this. You know, this event here is to be able to help launch these careers of these 12 new writers of 37 and 12 new writers of, of 36. Actually, it's 14 because you got two bonus stories, two finalists in volume 37. So it's 26 new writers and 24 uh, new artists. We're doing this to help launch their careers and hopefully we'll see them in the next um, season or two with their books coming out. Otherwise, thank you very much and um, be sure to uh, share this we have an event tomorrow as well with um uh, robert j sawyer and with john haas who is a winner from canada in volume uh, 35 um, that'll be taking place at three o'clock uh, pacific time 6 p.m eastern time so if you want to see this again listen to uh, rob sawyer and john you're welcome to do that too uh, otherwise thank you very much and very much appreciate your attending and be sure if you haven't done it yet, get your books. Books A Million has been a great sponsor for this event. You got signed by all the winners and all the judges who were in attendance. So again, get your copies now. The link's in the, uh, the, in the uh, chat. So thank you very much and have a great rest of the evening.